Hey everyone, um, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be kind of going over Lego photorealism. I made another video several months ago about um, this exact topic, but it is a little bit dated. I have learned a tremendous amount in the past six months since that last one was made, and I've also found um, a lot more user-friendly ways to render everything rather than using the um, LDRAW importer. So yeah, that's what we're going to be going going through today in this video. Uh, we'll be covering how to import the LEGO models into Blender and how to make them look photorealistic using the lighting and everything. So let's jump right in then. Alright, so for this tutorial we are going to be starting out in stud.io. It it's a pretty simple program, it's really nice to design in, and the important thing is that you can import a ton of different types of files in here. There's like you can import the LEGO Digital Designer files, or LDRAW files, and then we can export them. So we're just going to go ahead and open something in here for our test. So here we have a Panzer IV by MJ Louder, um, MJ Bricks on Flickr. So for this tutorial, we will just go ahead and use his tank. Um, so you can see it's missing the track. We can just find one of these link treads in here. It doesn't really matter what type we have because we can just scale them down in Blender and I will show you how to do that. So all we need is just one in there for now and then we are just gonna save it. You're just gonna save and then we're gonna upload this to a website called Mechabricks and the website itself is what is going to allow us to export into Blender. So the program that we're going to be using to export the LEGO model into Blender is called Mechabricks. So you can just go here to mechabricks.com and they have in their shop tab, they have a Blender Lite add-on that you can download. I would recommend buying the Blender Advance though because when you import them it automatically goes in and adds scratches and thumbprints and just really makes like makes makes the 3D objects look like real LEGO. So I would highly recommend buying this plugin, but again, there is the Blender Lite plugin, and you just install it the same way. They work almost identical. It's just this one doesn't add the scratches on the material. So anyways, once you guys get this, it doesn't matter what one you get. We're going to go up to this workshop tab up here. And now this is where we can import the model from stud.io or you can actually go in here and design an entire model inside of Mechabrick. It's an online Lego modeling software, but I prefer stud.io personally. But the nice thing is, is that you can come up here to file and go down to import. And we're going to use, we were using a .io file, so we can just hit that. And then we locate the file on our computer. So... So once we upload the file from stud.io, it's really simple. You can go through, make sure everything looks good, because every once in a while some things will get changed when you're importing from program to program. But usually it's pretty good. All you have to do is just kind of go glance over things. And if, if you're not happy with how it looks in here, you can edit it in Blender as well. So as you can see, these front tiles, they're not actually snapped on there. But it's a lot easier to fix this in Blender. So we're just going to go ahead and export it to a file that Blender can read. So we're going to go ahead and hit export. And I'm going to put the Lego logo on there. And then you can just leave it all like that. And then you hit export. And we're just going to save it to the same spot that I saved the stud.io file. Okay, so once that is downloaded, we can just show this in folder, and we have it right there. Let's just extract it, and then you do want to name it if it's not already named, just so you don't get confused on things. So yeah, now we have that. So we can go back into Mechabricks, and if you made the purchase for the Blender Advanced, or if you just added the Blender Lite to the cart, you can go ahead and download the software right here. It's just going to be a zip file and download it to somewhere you will remember it. 
So I have it right there. We're just going to save it and don't extract that file. Um, we're just going to tell Blender that it's a zip file and Blender will extract it itself. So once we're inside of Blender, to install the add-on file, we just go up to File, User Preferences, and then we go to Install Add-on from File, and then we're just going to find the folder where we downloaded the Mechabricks zip file to, and in that case I put mine here somewhere. in the Panzer IV, and then you're just going to select and install this add-on from file. So it's either going to be the Blender Advanced.zip or Blender Lite.zip. So I already have mine installed, but all you would do is you would just go up and you would hit Install Add-on from file. And then once you have it installed, it's really simple to import a, import a model. All you have to do is come up here, go down to Import, and then mechabricks.dae -E, or .dae, sorry. That's the type of file that we downloaded from Mechabricks. So we're just going to be looking for the file that we exported from Mechabricks. So mine was in the same folder that I installed the plugin from. So you're looking for the .dae file and that's a Collada file. And then we can just import it. And sometimes it does take a little while to import things if they are bigger but it's really simple so we you can see we have our model inside of blender now um, and let's just make sure you want to make sure you're in cycles render because that's the most realistic and that's what this is made for and if you go ahead and hit shift Z you can see that it's gonna everything's gonna be dark in here when you very first start but we could go ahead and add a world material to see what we're working with so I use this this plugin called Pro Lighting Skies. It is it is almost a hundred dollars though, so I don't really recommend that. So I'm going to show you an alternative to be able to light the scene really easily and realistically. We're just going to go back to Chrome in a new tab, and what we're looking for is an HDRI image or an HDR image. And an HDR image is pretty much just a 360 image, so HDRI Haven or HDR, HDRI Haven is a really good location for these, and you can pick a sky. You can really pick any of these, including a studio, so we could go ahead and download a studio for this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the world tab right here, and we're going to use nodes. And then we're going to click, and we want to use an environment texture. And that environment texture, we're going to go ahead and find the image that we just downloaded from HDRI Haven. So you can see it's just going to be called a .hdr file, so go ahead and just open the image. And you can see just like that we added lighting to the scene. And so the nice thing with HDRI images is that they project light not only from just the lamp right here, but it's also projecting light from this backdrop. It's reflecting all around the model and it just really adds to the realism of this. So we can go over here and we can actually increase or decrease the strength of the lighting. You don't want it too much though. I'd say maybe two is enough. And then one more thing that we want to add to make this look really realistic is called Filmic Blender. So again, we're just going to go into Google Chrome or whatever web browser you're using. And we're going to look up Filmic Blender. And it's just going to be this GitHub file. And you install it the same way that you installed the Mechabricks file. So we're just going to download the zip folder from GitHub and we're just going to save it here and go to fire file user preferences and again you just install it the same way that you installed mechabricks from you install the add-on from file so right there filmic dash blender dash master dot zip you would install that and then to be able to turn that on you might have to exit and then reopen blender for it to take effect you go into this tab right here the scene and you want to find the drop-down that says color management right there 
and you can see these options. There's sRGB. Um, what we want what we want to change is under the render view tab where it says default it will give you an option now for filmic right there and so you can see everything got a little bit washed out looking but that's really good so what filmic blender does is it adds a higher higher stops for dynamic range so the default blender only has i think eight stops of dynamic range and filmic goes like a couple hundred times more than that so in dynamic range is the kind of the color spectrum so you'll start to see a lot more colors in here as well and to be able to edit this we can just use these curves right here and we can actually click and increase or decrease the colors you know make it look however you want so it does look a little bit kind of washed out but that's okay it, it does look pretty good and actually, before we do that, we can go through and add this track that we kept off the track. We can add it onto the tank. So we'll go ahead and go out of rendered view. We're going to make sure we're in orthographic by pressing numpad 5. And I'm just pressing the number keys on the side. We can go through and now we're going to draw a curve where we want the tracks to follow. So we will just hit shift A and we're going to go down to curve and we want a bezier curve we want to scale that up because right now it's pretty small and we want to rotate this around and rotate that on the x 90 oh, wrong way rotate on the y 90 so you want it to look like this compared to the side of your tank or whatever you're doing you you might not even need to need this step so if you guys don't need to add tracks or whatever to your vehicle you can just skip ahead in the video so what we're gonna do with this track is we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode and then we can go ahead and start kinda drawing the curve so the tracks just gonna follow this curve so we can Kind of put these and then to add more of these extrusions you just hit e and then you can kind of click and drag wherever and you do want to hit r just to be able to rotate that to follow the curvature of the track system and then just try and make sure that it is not going to go through any of your actual physical objects in blender so the gear systems or whatever So once we get the two endpoints fairly close together, all we have to do is we go down to curve, this little curve tab, we hit it, and we're just going to click toggle cyclic. And that'll connect the two, and then you can hit tab again to go out of edit mode. You can just kind of look at the track system. So ours isn't perfect, I might actually fix right here, or attempt to fix right here. We might have had to add a little bit more extrusions because it is kind of added it is kind of acting weird okay so we're just gonna click we're gonna drag this more kinda inside the tank wheel well and now what we're gonna do is with the bezier curve selected we're just gonna hit shift s and cursor to selected we're gonna come over to this track over here select it and then hit shift s and selection to cursor so it puts it right where the origin point for the Bezier curve is and now we can add some modifiers to the track first thing though is it is a little bit wide so we're gonna scale it down on the x-axis just to kinda try and match it like that and then we're gonna go up here to the modifiers tab and we're gonna add two main modifiers so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an array modifier first and you want to make sure that it's going out straight just kinda like that and then you can increase the amount and then you don't have to like get it perfect or anything just do a couple and then we're gonna add a curve modifier we're just gonna hit this little eyedropper tool and select the bezier curve 
and you can see that it starts to follow it. So if we go back up to this one, we can just keep adding more tracks to it. And then once they look pretty connected, you can kind of play with the distance point right here. So maybe like point, uh, what was the last one? So minus 0.695 or something. So that actually went the opposite way. So we need a little bit more. So maybe 0.705 for this one. Maybe a little less, minus 0.7025. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to just say that we're happy with that. You can see these tracks are kind of messed up because I could I didn't really have time to go through and find the other link tread, but it doesn't really matter. You can even mo you can even model your own tank tread for this. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're just going to hit we're going to select the tracks and then try and select the curve right there and then hit control C and then control V. And then we can move it on the other axis and go to maybe the front view. And boom, we have our tracks on our tank. And that really was that was a lot easier than trying to go and position them all manually inside of stud.io or something. Um, so now we just kind of want to see how everything looks. Um, before we do that, though, to make things look a little bit more realistic, you can see everything's set pretty well. Um, these we still need to fix, though, so that they just barely come off the front like that and maybe the ones on the back. So we're going to add one more thing to just kind of make it look how real Legos would be. Um, everything, when you drop it together in stud.io, it puts it like right next to each other. But if you look at real pictures of Lego, um, everything is just kind of like, it's not really built perfectly. You'll see what I mean. We're going to randomize transform everything, so we're just going to hit B and highlight over everything so everything's selected and then we press spacebar and we're gonna type in randomize transform and down here on the bottom left we're just gonna give it point one for the location you can kinda see that everything's moving slightly giving it a little bit more gaps and everything and we're also gonna add point five to the degree section for the Z tab and point five for the Y and maybe 0.5 for the X. And we probably should have done this with the tracks not selected because it does kind of mess that up, as you can see. So maybe what we'll do is we'll do the same thing, but first we're going to hide the tracks. So we will just go here and we'll press H to hide them. And then we can select the tank we just hit randomize transform again and it saves all of our um, input so if you wanted to do this to a lot of different vehicles you don't have to type that in every single time it'll remember it for the next time unless you close and reopen blender so once that's done we can hit alt h and the tracks are back and they didn't really get affected by that um, but yeah it looks pretty good so far so what we can do now is we can go ahead and add a camera so we can hit shift a go down to camera and we're gonna scale this up because Mechabricks um, it does make everything really 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 big you can see here's kind of our 3d floor down there forgot what it's called but it makes everything huge so if things start to disappear so let's go to the camera view by pressing 0 and we're gonna go ahead and lock camera to view so that we can pan around with it you can see that like just zooming out the tank is disappearing like what what's happening so that's called clipping so the camera only renders for a certain distance and so if you keep the camera selected and you come up here to the camera you can see it's clipping it 100 meters I think is what it's in in meters so we can just set that to like 10,000 and we won't have an issue we can zoom out and whatever also if the viewport starts doing that as well so like you're panning around the viewport is say at 100 you can see that everything's kind of disappearing as well so just go ahead and turn the viewport clipping to 10,000 as well just so we don't have any issues we can go back to the um, camera view we're gonna lock this lock the camera to the view so we can orbit around and then we want to kind of give the camera some settings so it we can we can make this function just like a real camera 
Um, we have focal length, so that's like the lens zoom in. So like, I mean, a 200 millimeter lens is really zoomed in, right? So for a lot of like the Lego models, I like to do like 55 and it kind of gives it a good perspective, um, makes it look like you're really holding a camera to a small object, I guess. Um, I'm going to turn off the lock camera to clipping now just so I can look around if I need to. Then we're going to go down to give it some focus so we can click the little eyedropper and we'll focus it right here, right at the base of the barrel. And then we're going to give it maybe like a 0.3 radius view. And then let's go ahead and see how that looks if we hit Shift Z to render. So that's starting to look pretty good. It's looking pretty realistic. The lights are still blown out a little bit, so we might just turn this down to like 1.5 or something. That looks a little better. Um, so let's actually turn this up to like 3 so you can see the depth of field in effect. You can see the background's all blurred out, but a lot of our tank is blurred out as well. So we will do this at like maybe a 1.25 would be good, I think, for this little image. We're going to lock the camera to view again, and we're just going to kind of find maybe like a nice, a nice view of our tank. Maybe right there against the white background. That looks pretty good. Although I do kind of want something for the shadows to land on, so we could go ahead and add a little plane right there. So if we just hit Shift S and cursor to center, the cursor goes back to the center. We're going to unlock the camera again. We're just going to hit Shift A, and then we're going to go Mesh and a plane. We're just going to scale this up just a little bit bigger than our object. And then we want to hit G and then Z to go down on the Z axis, just until it just barely touches the track. Like that. And we can go back to our camera view and hit shift Z again to render it. So that's looking pretty good. Maybe we could make that a little bit bigger. Maybe a little smaller. Maybe a circle would have been the best option, but it's whatever. We're also going to give a material to that plane, so we can just hit new material down here. So you can choose something. Um, we're going to go ahead and go into the node editor. Down here, node editor. I'm going to go out. So everything in real life has some reflection. So if it's just diffusing all of the light, that's not realistic. So we're just going to add something really simple. We're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a glossy node. So, But it's not just 100% glossy either. I mean, that looks pretty good. You can see the reflection. But it also is just reflecting like everything. So we want it to be a mixture of the two. But you can see if you're trying to like put both in at the same time, it doesn't work. So we're just going to hit Shift A, and we're going to type in Mix, and we're going to pick the Mix Shader. We can just click it right there when the line highlights. And then this is where we can plug in both, and we can have a happy medium. Kind of like Goldilocks, right? So that looks pretty good. You can actually control which one it is more just by sliding this, or you can click and type it in. So I kind of want it to maybe be like 60% glossy, 40% diffuse. So we'll type in 0.6. And I'm pretty happy with that for now. Um, one thing I would like to do is rotate the entire tank. So if we click and we make this a whole view again, and go out of the rendered view. You can see that like if we try and select something, like it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hide the plane again. And this is what you're going to want to be doing, especially with LEGO models where they have a lot of pieces. You don't want to like accidentally miss one piece when you're selecting it. So we're going to do what's called parenting to empties. So we're just going to select the whole tank, make sure nothing else is selected. The camera's not selected, so that's good. You can see the point of origin changed. So what we want to do is we want to put the 3D cursor to that origin point. So we're going to hit Shift S. And we're going to do cursor to selected. And then we are going to do Shift A and we're going to add an empty. And we're going to use a cube for this one. And then where we're really big, we need to scale everything up. And we could scale on maybe the Y axis like that. Maybe a little more, make sure everything's good. Then we could lift that up as well. Okay, so this is going to be our tank. So what we can do is we select everything. 
and then hold down shift and select the parent twice so you deselect it pressing it the first time then you reselect it again so that's the last thing selected and then we hit control p to parent and you want to set the parent to the object but you want to make sure to keep the transform so we're just going to click that and now if we just select this box around everything we can just hit and rotate and everything is rotating everything becomes part of this box that we made so we're just gonna command Z we can actually go here and you can control the rotation or location you know like that as well so we're gonna go back to the camera view we're just gonna rotate it till we see kind of a nice angle we want so something like that and then the pl the floor plane is gone so we're just gonna hit alt H to bring it back and maybe if we rotated this there we go then there's not just like a corner right there and we could even give this base a color that might look good a little bit better so we'll go to the node editor editor again down here and we'll go to the rendered view and let's just maybe try giving the diffuse like a reddish color like that I kinda like that maybe a blue I mean you guys can just kind of experiment with whatever you want you can also just do the glossy level I actually might make it a little bit more glossy though so you can see the reflection slightly when you actually render the image it will be a lot more reflective and you can also increase or decrease the roughness so if you wanted it to be a mirror you could turn the roughness to zero and then it's just like a mirror but we don't want it to be a complete mirror so we're gonna give it like a point two maybe even a little more like a point three five that way it kind of um, blurs out the reflection kinda like it really would if you were just looking at something slightly reflective but not a mirror and we can close the node editor again make this side panel a little bit bigger and we're gonna go back to the filmic um, blender now we can kind of play around with the curves figure out what we want so I mean if you go too low it starts to look really weird because it's like super high contra contrast sorry, and not enough um, normal lighting and this way it's just way washed out so you want to stay like kind of in the middle but you guys can play around usually I notice the best points for it is like up at the top just above it maybe a little or just below it or down at the bottom they both kind of do something slightly different so just play around till you find something you like so maybe like right right there and then we are ready to render so we're gonna go out of the rendered view by hitting shift Z and we can come over here to the tab for rendering so this one I'm gonna be using my central processing unit the CPU um, you, right now if this is at 50% 50 percent 50 of 1080 is going to be like 720 format so we want to increase this to at least like 80 for this one I'm just going to do 75 but if you want it at the full HD 1920 by 1080 you just turn it up to 100 we can go down to sampling right here and usually it's really good at like 256 and we want to make sure we have denoising turned on because sampling it just kind of like You'll, you'll see what I mean once we render it but make sure you have denoising turned on as well and that just helps it look a lot smoother it won't be so noisy once the render is done um, clamp is usually good to have I, I like to have mine set at like 0.2 or I mean not 0.2 2 total and then we go down to performance right here and this is how it's going to render it's going to be rendering in little cubes so right now it would be s little cubes that are 64 by 64 um, squares and my processor has 32 threads so there'd be 32 of those little squares rendering it at all times but I'm gonna turn this down to about 40 maybe 30 35 even actually you might only need to use uh, even numbers I can't remember so we're gonna do 34 by 34 little squares the clamp is at 2, renders at 256, and denoising is turned on, so I think it's pretty fair to just hit render, so let's see how it looks. So
So you can see these little squares that I was talking about. They just kind of go through, and they're the ones calculating the light, light rays from the HDRI map. And it's looking pretty good. One thing, too, is that if you're doing this through Mechabricks, it renders so much faster than trying to use the Eldra importer, I found. Um, the Eldra importer gives like the models really nice geometry and everything, um, but the Mechabricks version, it just goes through and just kind of adds a bevel, and there's not as much geometry, but it renders so much faster, and it's really nice for larger scale scenes. All right, so our render is done. You can see it took 3 minutes and 41 seconds on my computer. An equivalent render that I did that was very similar took almost 30 minutes to do using the um, Eldra importer on the same exact machine. So I really recommend using the Mechabricks plugin. Um, it's just there at their website. You can use the free version or you can use the advanced version. I definitely would recommend using the advanced version though. It does have a little bit nicer materials and you can, it also adds like the scratches and little micro imperfections to the tank. So one thing too that I'll show you before we're done with, with this video is we'll go here into the node editor one more time. I can just kind of show you the base when we're working with these materials of the Legos. So we can just click on a brick. You can come down and so we'll go into rendered view for a minute. So we can actually just click on here and we could change the bricks to any color we wanted. So one way that really shows off the scratches and everything is like if it's a really dark color. So say we just turn the whole tank to like a really dark gray. And you'll notice too that most of the colors kind of change with it. And that's because like it's just the tan so it puts this node tree for all of the same color parts. Unless there's something slightly different with them. So that one was a little bit darker tan. But it's really easy to just change all the colors. So let's go ahead and just make this look black, almost black. And we are going to add a little bit of color variation. So this just kind of makes them slightly different colors. So if you put this value to 1, you can see that there's some grays, there's blacks, there's all different types of colors in there. So it looks kind of like it was thrown together with a bunch of different color pieces. So we're going to use for this one where it's black, we're just going to use like 0.2 is a pretty good combination. Some of the bricks look a little bit faded because they're older or something. I'm also going to turn up the roughness. I do like the reflectiveness, but I think it's a little too much. So we'll turn this up to like 0.1. You can increase the scratches. We'll do that to like 0.2. Dents are good. Fingerprints, we could do like 0.3 just to make them stand out. And let's maybe turn down the color variation a little bit and make it almost pitch black. This way we can really see all the fingerprints and imperfections on these dark pieces. So we have a black Panzer IV. We're going to go out of the rendered view for a sec. We're going to go back into the image editor and we're going to switch this to slot 2 so it doesn't like overwrite this image. And then we're just going to hit render again. And we're going to give it another couple minutes. So you can see it's starting to do some like little imperfections. There's little bumps and dents and there's a fingerprint right there. And it just automatically adds that to every brick, which is so nice. If you could, if you had to go through and do all that manually, it would take hundreds of hours. I'm not even joking to go through and UV unwrap every part and then try and add those. So, And this is only available on the advanced edition with these little imperfections, but the, it really adds to the realistic look. So that's why I'm just saying like, I really recommend it and I would really go with this. Um, there is also another plugin that I was using, um, kind of comparing with the Mechabricks shader while that's rendering. It's called B-Lego from the Blender Market. And you can just go through and apply it to different objects. And it gives it kind of a similar looking plastic. So you can see it adds fingerprints, it adds scratches and little flakes and kind of 
kind of some imperfections like that. I really like this one as well. Um, they kind of both have their own purpose. I actually, on the Battle of Kursk film that I'm doing, I'm using a mixture of both the nodes kind of plugged together using some mix shaders and stuff. But I really recommend this one too. This one's $8. But definitely if you're going to do something like that, get the Mechabricks plugin and then use this if you want to kind of experiment and you have the time and money to experiment because you can get some really good results if you mix the two together. We're here back to our tank, just kind of checking it out. It's looking pretty good. You can see why I did the darkness because things really stand out a lot easier. And it's like a badass looking tank. It looks kind of like the Batmobile, you know, like maybe a German Batmobile. The Wehrmacht Batmobile, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. So yeah, there's there's the black one and we'll go back and look at the tan one. In fact, I kind of like the black one a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe if it was like a good medium. This one's a little too light. You, it's harder to see the imperfections if it's on a light surface. So like white or tan, it's going to be really hard to detect anything. It still looks really good, but yeah, if it's a darker color, you can really see things and it really adds to it. One more thing I'd like to just add to is on my website I am doing a contest but I'm also doing something on the forum so if you go to militaryblocks.com and you go to forum there is going to be a new tab right here in the filmmaking where it's going to be all about the Battle of Kursk so if you have questions on how I'm doing stuff or you kind of want to like like get some more information on how to do it yourself. Um, there's going to be a whole topic dedicated to this that you guys can go and interact and I can answer your questions if you have them or I can attempt to. And other people that are like-minded and kind of want to be doing stuff in Blender like this, they have a place to go and we can kind of share resources and talk about how we're doing things. So I will see you there and hopefully this helps you guys make some really cool looking videos. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.